I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. We're featuring some special programs in the next few weeks focusing on Missouri Southern retirees. Each year we try to highlight them, kind of Southern reflections, looking at their careers as they leave Southern or they're taking phase retirement at Missouri Southern. Our guest today, Deborah Snodgrass from the Music Department. Thank you for being here today. Hi, Judy. I want to start off with for, for people, let them know you're I was working in the Music Department. Describe your position right now. People ask what are you doing. Right now, I'm kind of a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. I wear several hats. Uh, I've um, been uh, the head of piano studies or the chair of piano studies right. for several years now. So my responsibilities would include um, the piano majors and some of the electives mm -hmm. and then uh, generally managing what goes on as far as piano education, class piano. and I don't teach all of it, mm -hmm. but I've kind of um, coordinate everything. Right, right, coordinating. Right. Okay. Yes, and uh, I've been teaching freshman theory, freshman mm -hmm. um, theory one and theory two, so mm -hmm. that's one hat, and then I've been teaching the uh, education majors, uh, the music methods mm -hmm. course that they have to take, the elementary education majors, and that's been fun. Great, so a little different type of variety of the, the different aspects involved in the music. Right, part, right. right. I never get bored. <laughs> right. Now you came here in the mid-1990s. Yes, as adjunct. Mm -hmm. Actually, I began uh, by just accompanying. Mm -hmm. I accompanied a senior recital in the early 90s, and then I was asked to do some more, and then I was asked to um, substitute for uh, Bob Harris. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember right. him. Mm -hmm. He was the chair of piano studies at that point, and his mother was ill, and so I stayed for the one semester, and then he decided to retire. So you found yourself <laughs> in the position of <laughs> right. right, and it was uh, just still adjunct at that mm -hmm. point, but uh, I taught class piano mm -hmm. and then um, just kind of worked my way up. And became full-time <laughs> right. faculty member for the department. Yes, right. and it's been great. This has been my dream job and a dream faculty, too, mm -hmm. to work with. They are wonderful in the music department. I hear that from a lot of the people that I'm re interviewing, retirees, that really what helps make their job fun are the people that they're working with. Absolutely. Yeah, you look forward to going every day, not only because you like what you do, mm -hmm. but you like the people you're working with. Well, let's backtrack a little bit because I've asked this question to all people. Uh, your background in your field, in your case, music, right. uh, music education, but perhaps even further back, your interest in music. What sparked that interest in you at a young age to follow that path? I think it was my mother giving piano lessons. In fact, she had about 40 a week, and that's Quite a, lot of, hearing piano quite a music. lot of people coming in and out of my house <laughs> <laughs> playing the piano. So at three and a half, she said I wanted to play the piano. I would climb up on the bench and try to pick out the songs that I heard her students playing. Mm -hmm. And so she decided, okay, I'll just show her some stuff. And that was the beginning of my piano background. And uh, so I don't think I can ever remember not knowing that that would be my field, mm -hmm. would be music. So that love of music started at a very yes. early age. Band, glee club, mm -hmm. choir, you know, anything that I could do music, playing for church. I was there, <laughs> wanted it. <laughs> so you're a good example of people saying it's important to introduce children to music at a young age. Absolutely, and uh, I think some children demand it, <laughs> like I did. Now, I, so you were able to carry that through, and music obviously had a very powerful impact on your life and helped in a lot of different ways, your career success as well as you know impacting your life and success with uh, the Miss America pageant. There's a lot of ways to take those things that you've learned and take them throughout your life. Yes, and opening doors, mm -hmm. oh my, open doors to scholarship and um, paying for my education and then uh, being able to play for church and right. accompany people. I, I can't tell you the number of people that I have met and worked with just because I'm able to play the piano. And you've been able to do a lot of traveling thanks to the knowing the music as well. Yes. And tying all of that together. So the same time came for education. You obviously went to high school and then going on to the college mm -hmm. education. You knew then that you wanted to pursue music as a Absolutely, degree. yeah. Mm -hmm. There was never a question. I kind of think it's strange when one of my students comes in and says, well, I think I'll change my major. I don't know how you that feels. You didn't know how to change it. <laughs> <laughs> because I was just always so pointed toward music mm -hmm. um, and started out wanting to be uh, 
an educator, right. music educator in the public schools, and uh, still would probably love to do that, but I changed my major to performance mm -hmm. because that's exactly what I was doing all the time as far as being Miss America. Right. I was traveling, and they would ask me to perform, so I changed my major to that, but mm -hmm. as far as changing a field, I just can't. It was still within the music field, yes, it was just right. the performance yeah, it aspect. Always will be, okay. yes. So the performance aspect of music is an area that people are probably curious about as far as being able to maintain, I'm sure that's a very hectic lifestyle at times. You know, you're constantly practicing, preparing for your performances. Mm -hmm. And I find in uh, getting acquainted with some of the performers that do it for a living, mm -hmm. I find that it's their hunger and thirst for new music mm -hmm. that keeps them going. Mm -hmm. um, you can say that piano performance people are kind of a weird bunch because <laughs> we spend a lot of time alone in the practice room. Uh, sometimes four to six hours a day. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that hunger for new music to learn it, to memorize it. Um, piano is one of the instruments that you don't perform with music because sometimes one of the performance pieces that you might do would have like 40 pages. So you can't be moving you your hands while you're playing. You don't have any hands to turn the pages. So mm -hmm. that it's all memory work mm -hmm. and uh, so a lot of repetition. And some people don't like that. Some mm -hmm. people just, that's boring. You have to have the drive then, the passion yes, for loving the, the music. the passion for expressing that music. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I find that uh, it sets us apart, kind of, as performers. Now, can you see that in the students you're teaching now, the ones yes. that you have that drive when you yes. can see they, they're willing to put that time in in the practicing? Right. And a teacher just loves to see that. <laughs> Oh yeah, let me impart you some knowledge so that you can do <laughs> what you love to do. Mm -hmm. And so they're carrying through. Um, you then have played the role perhaps of mentor to many of students that have gone through your program as well. Yes, and I find in the music department it's a little bit different than uh, just um, teaching maybe an English class because mm -hmm. we're one-on-one -on -one with that student for right. at least 30 minutes and sometimes an hour a week. And so you learn about their entire lives. They come in and they're upset, mm -hmm. so you, you put the piano aside for about five so or ten minutes. So the education minutes, so, that, <laughs> so that we can kind of hold hands and mm -hmm. <laughs> and let's uh, talk about what what you're upset about, and the and you learn uh, a lot about their family background and the struggles they're having, and uh, you you see them as a person and not just your project, mm -hmm. not just your student, and you're you're wanting to. Um, you know, make something of their music career, you have to, you have to address the whole person right. at that point. So it's a privilege to be able to do that and have that hour or half hour one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with them that you can, like you said, be a mentor. Now at the end of their co collegiate career, when they walk across the stage at graduation, how does it feel to see they've completed those oh, requirements and now they're so ready to go on? good, <laughs> yes. I have stu two students that are walking uh, piano Graduation students mm -hmm. in this month, so I'm excited. Now, do you keep up with many of them after they've gone through and started their careers, whether it's performance or teaching or what they're going to do later? Yes, yes, and uh, that's also great to see them marry and have a family and mm -hmm. have a good job and, and be really satisfied with their careers. Now, of course, Missouri Southern has changed over the years since you've been here as well. The music department's gone through different changes like everybody else on campus. Uh, what about the field of you know, music education? Have you seen many changes in how uh, people are dealing with educating the students or the technology? Is anything uh, playing roles in that A type lot of, of technolo technologically <laughs> <laughs> changes, <laughs> changes mm -hmm. uh, that uh, apply to music especially. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot more... Uh, abilities to record things and right. play back to the students and so they are um, educated just by listening to their own performances. Uh, large groups of course have that capability too. Um, education of course evolves because of the accreditation so mm -hmm. a lot of changes there right. in what are uh, the requirements for a certificate. To have certification nowadays um, the vocal student needs to be educated in the instrumental side, and the instrumental person needs to be educated on the vocal side. So you need so, the whole package as a student. Right, so that student at certification can walk out with uh, the ability to do K through 12, mm -hmm. and uh, both instrumental and vocal. 
that's a lot. <laughs> that's a <laughs> lot of education. <laughs> um, so we're really proud of our students that uh, are educators and we follow them you know around the area mm -hmm. when they get their first job and then when they really excel in their profession we're really proud so you know they're impacting the youngsters in the public Absolutely. schools the private schools the ones that are going to be future right musicians and tying right. that together oh no you've committed to music at missouri southern also involved with an endowed scholarship to help continue that uh, tradition at southern tell me a little bit about that well that's thanks to my husband mm -hmm. he uh, has an endowed scholarship in his name mm -hmm. at the university of texas at Arlington and he saw firsthand how it impacted students to provide scholarship money for them right. and so he wanted to start one in my name so he went to the foundation and visited about it and helped raise money and it's really a joy to be able to give that money every year to mm -hmm. that student um, we've had some that have really been struggling and that ha has helped them that financial continue impact. Mm -hmm. to graduation which is great. Well, I know the phase retirement means you're going to be able to continue to do some teaching, then, right. correct? So that hands-on in the classroom. But what will you miss the most as far as going through this new next step in your life, from full uh, professor opportunities and teaching assistant professor to let's do phase part-time? Probably missing the students in the classroom because mm -hmm. I won't be doing any classroom oh, okay. work as far as what we have decided, uh, the department head and I, have decided that my responsibilities will be at this point he said probably just to continue with the piano mm -hmm. the private students uh, the electives and the majors and so I won't be in a classroom setting so you'll be working so one-on-one on one with the students right mm -hmm. and I love that mm -hmm. but it it's kind of neat to be in the classroom too because mm -hmm. there's always that interaction around the subject that you're passionate about mm -hmm. and so um, I think I'll miss that now, if someone, one of the students come in our program or comes up to you and say, what's the secret to success? They want to go on to music education as well. Or they, what would you say is the secret to success for someone wanting to do that? Keep going. <laughs> Don't <laughs> quit. And the, the thing that keeps you going is that passion in your heart to see somebody else get that spark about music. Mm -hmm. That someone else will say, oh, that's the teacher that inspired me to go ahead and, and learn to sing or learn to play the trombone or learn to play the piano. Just keep going because that, those rich experiences are worth it. They really are. Great. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to visit with us and share with our audience as thank you're you. approaching the retirement phase. And thank you for your service to Missouri Southern over the years as well. Oh, it's been my dream job. <laughs> thank you very much. And I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for joining us on this portion of the program. I invite you to stay tuned because we'll be back with more right after this. At Missouri Southern, we believe achieving a university education should be possible for everyone. That is why we are working hard to make earning a university education accessible and always an excellent value. As a graduate of Missouri Southern, you should expect to reach your career goals. Take a look at our graduates in health sciences, teacher education, business, or biology. Their success can be yours. Come check out Missouri Southern, apply for admission, and see where your academic career can take you. You stand beside me each Saturday, wrapped up against the crisp, fall chill and driving rain, scarf around your neck to protect your clean shaven face, muttering underneath your breath and cursing at the refs, you always keep a folded program in your back pocket. They say you've been coming here for years, that you were the original fan. You remember seeing Rod Smith run and even saw the championship in 72. You are the murmur of the crowd and the waves of applause dancing along the field. You are the roar of the score and the shh before. You are the disappointed sigh and the laughter among the children. You often smile as you head for the exits with the drums still pounding in your ears. I doubt I'll ever know your name, but they say you are a linebacker.
Hello, I'm Judy Stiles, and welcome back to Newsmakers. We're continuing to visit with retiring faculty members at Missouri Southern State University in the spring of 2017. Today from the Engineering Technology Department. Dr. Barthorow, thank you very much for being here today. My pleasure, Judy. Uh, people would probably want to start off with the Mount Familiars. Tell us about your current position, what you are doing here at Missouri Currently Southern. Currently, I teach in the Engineering Technology Program. Mm -hmm. I teach all of the engineering graphics. Okay. So that's, in common terms, CAD. Mm -hmm. And you've been here since the 1980s, correct? Uh, 1987. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 29 years. And uh, people, engineering technology is kind of a broad term. So if someone asks you, how do you define your department? How do you describe that for them? In broad terms, it's basically a quality control type of degree. Mm -hmm. And my component is the graphics. Okay. You, your interests, people are curious, anyone who's been working in higher education as long as you have and working with students, uh, what sparked your initial interest perhaps in the field itself before you even got into higher education? In the business One of my world? professors when I was an undergraduate mm -hmm. and uh, he presented a final project and I presented to him a alternative solution <laughs> and he couldn't prove it different or prove mm -hmm. it wrong. So I kind of said, hmm, I like this. Mm -hmm. So that sparked your interest in learning and researching and understanding yeah. the field. Right, and teaching it. And teaching. So your background comes from the up north, I should say, a northern Minnesota area. Correct. So here people are curious, what brought you to Missouri Southern? What brought you down south? To this uh, area? The job, mm -hmm. it really did. Um, when I interviewed, Dean Maupin had done his master's degree at the University of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And he had specifically noted, he goes, you're a graduate of the University of Minnesota. And I said, I am. And he goes, I like the program, I like the graduates that produce, uh, uh, that they produce out of that program. He goes, so this is what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. and, and you came aboard. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now the graphics side, you mentioned CAD, for people who aren't familiar with the technology and what we're talking about, let's just define that for viewers that may not be familiar well, with Well, that's, um, more commonly known as, in the field as AutoCAD or mm -hmm. SolidWorks. Right. Uh, but we get as broad as looking at doing floor plans, we look at doing interior design. Mm. But now in the technology world, it's all computerized. Right. So there's also animation mm -hmm. that's involved. So the students get quite a broad look. So a lot of computer emphasis today. It's all computer and emphasis. Computer. How does this compare to when you started? Was everything, describe the early days when you came with law papers and drawings? Or well, how it was a lot of uh, work on the board mm -hmm. with pencils, erasers, and patience. <laughs> <laughs> because if you made a mistake, generally you threw the paper away. Mm -hmm. So people had to learn to get it right the first time a lot yes. of times and working that together. Yes. So working of preparing students and we're working with business and engineering, uh, the field itself that your students or graduates are going to, it's evolved tremendously as well, I imagine, Correct. what they're looking for in yeah. students. You know, when companies call me up, they're expecting a certain standard for students. Mm -hmm. And we've always prided ourselves here at Missouri Southern on being able to fill those positions with students that will meet those requirements. So do you have a good dialogue between the industry or the business world and the f uh, department here on campus? Or yeah, that uh -huh. was one of the things that I really strived for because mm -hmm. when students would come into our program, they very often didn't have a background. And so it was important for them once they got a basic skill set to go out and get an internship in industry so that they became familiar with the various areas in the industry. And I know a lot of students oftentimes come to a university thinking, I think I want to do this, but they're not sure until exactly. they actually start doing it. Exactly. So have you seen a lot of students find that, that that's where they find their niche or what they want? Yeah, they really do get turned on. It's like a trigger mm -hmm. you know, or a light bulb. You know, all of a sudden the light bulb comes on and they go, I like this. And so so you have that changing of a student's life, perhaps, in many ways, yes. time together. So yes. The program itself on campus has grown a lot over the years. Imagine Correct. you have started from a small department, and today you have a much larger department on campus. Yeah, when I came here, we had six majors. Mm -hmm. And we grew the program into an accredited program, only the only accredited program in the state of Missouri. 
And so that was quite uh, a real feather in our cap. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Leone was a, a big push for that. Now, for viewers, accreditation really means a lot to an institution and to the graduates when you have that. Correct. Package. Most companies, rec when they're looking for engineering staff, mm -hmm. they prefer to hire from an accredited program because they know the standards that the program has to meet. So they know that these students are equal because they're meeting with consistent yes. standards that can come into their company. International standards. International. Globalization has been an aspect that we've talked a lot about at Missouri Southern and of course the global mission, mission, international mission. Have you found that some of your graduates are going beyond in that aspect as well, that they're looking internationally? They really are. Um, I, I was talking about uh, one of my students who is currently living in Utah. His service area is the western side of Canada. Mm. And he basically services companies for his software throughout the you know, upper US and Canada. So, he's so yeah, it, it really plays into it. So people are aware of what's happening in the international business right. world and tying that together. Well, teaching the classes, what do you enjoy the most from a professor's point of view? You have students who are coming in and they're exploring their possibilities and then they take the classes. I think, uh, watching the students realize that what they have done is actually there for a reason. Mm, okay. um, my beginning graphics class, they actually start doing paper. Mm -hmm. So they actually sketch all of their solutions on paper first. And by the end of the semester, which is about now, right. uh, they l have a chance to look back and I say, okay, now when we started, you couldn't do the sketch. Now, you can not only sketch it, but you can also put that same sketch into the computer and verify that the computer is doing it right. So really the good basics that carry yeah. through their education yeah. and understanding. So do you feel that technology has obviously enhanced a lot of what students can do, but they still need to know the basics in many cases. They still need to think. <laughs> so yes. Computers don't think for them. Right. So it's understanding how to use that technology to apply Correct. what they want to do and working that together. Uh, and the whole field of industry has changed with automation and equipment. Uh, we see, you know, plants have uh, automated equipment, but it still takes someone who can understand how to operate that, how to design it, and make that work right. well. And that's one of the things about uh, our engineering technology program is we not only teach the students how to solve problems, but how to think through those problems too. Mm -hmm. So carrying that through. Missouri Southern itself, uh, take us back 30 years ago or so when you came to campus. Uh, much smaller campus, facilities, you've seen a lot of that change yeah. over the years. <laughs> yeah, well, like I was telling my wife, when I interviewed for the job, the, uh, the wall separating my lab from the hallway was a two-block course. So to get into the lab, so mm -hmm. to speak, I just walked over the wall. Step over near there. <laughs> so you didn't have a separate office. Right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, over 29 years, I've seen a lot of positive change. Mm -hmm. Campus-wide as well, Missouri Southern's enrollment has grown over the years. You've seen a lot of just the campus itself continuing to grow. You feel Correct. Like and Correct. carry through. People as well. I know that you've worked with a lot of people who've retired prior to you. That you have a lot. Have they, <laughs> did they have impacts on you in their, while they oh, were yeah. here? Yeah, I've, I've maintained a lot of relationships with uh, former faculty mm -hmm. because their insight gives me guidance and it's always been kind of like a, rud a rudder. You know? mm -hmm. So, and it also gives me an idea of how to com communicate with the community. So that tie between the school and the community, the university and the community is an essential part of yes. that's involved. And for me too. Mm -hmm. How about the graduates? When you hear back from someone who's been out of school for five, ten years, and they're coming back to see you, is that, how, how does that feel when they come back to visit? It's a lot of fun mm -hmm. because we do reminisce, but I also bring back past graduates to assess current students mm -hmm. so that they can bring into the discussion their experience from the point that they graduated to now. Mm -hmm. So giving them that, that other point of view. That, right. that, and you feel that's helpful that it's not always just the professor telling them when they hear someone from the outside come in and Correct. tell them what is going you know, on. Um, I have a Thursday night class right now and mm -hmm. I had one of my former students come in who works for Missouri Gas. Mm -hmm. And he gave them a very intriguing perspective in an hour's presentation. That, that they would heard firsthand from him making right. a big difference. Right. 
From a faculty member's perspective, then, what would you say for a student their key to success is? You've seen a lot of students go through your program, a lot of students graduate. What is, is there any certain key to success that you would tell them to be a successful student and then go on to be successful in their career? Patience and listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because uh, if you don't have the patience, you won't listen. Mm -hmm. So they go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. So that d discipline that will carry through in the workplace, too, I imagine, right. and tying that together. Leaving Missouri Southern, people are probably curious, uh, what will you miss the most? You've spent a lot of years here, a lot of time, worked with a lot of people. Oh, just the interaction with the students. Mm -hmm. So the, th the saying that people have said, a teacher touches a student's life uh, for a lifetime, you feel that that's definitely true. Correct. And working that together. Correct. And other question a lot of people may ask, what happens after retirement? You know, that's a big step in someone's life. You've put a lot of time in and commitment to your field. Yeah. I think uh, there's some time fishing up in northern Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to relax and catch some fish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, st we just spent a week up there, mm -hmm. and uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. So there's still always that home to go back to. Oh, yeah. Tying that together. Oh, yes. yeah. And Missouri Southern um, in Joplin has made a commitment to serving the community. Do you feel that through your program, it has indeed helped serve our region and our community? Throughout I would hope so. Mm -hmm. I really would. Otherwise, my s former students wouldn't be coming back. Mm -hmm. And looking to the future for your area in engineering technology, do you feel that that's one that's going to continue to be in demand for students to want to pursue? Oh, it will. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it'll evolve like mm -hmm. it should. Right. So... No, I, I do think it's going to be a component for the future. So is it nice to be able to feel that as, as I feel as I, grad, as I gradually leave the program and re retire, it's going to carry on and we have a system in place that's going to Correct. work? Correct. Yeah. I think the faculty that we have now will ensure that there is continued growth. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for visiting with me today, sharing some information for our audience. Like I said, I'd like to give retirees a chance to share, reflect upon their time here at Missouri Southern. Judy, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And I also want to thank you for your service to Missouri Southern over the years. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And for you, the viewers, we also would like to say thank you for joining us this week. And we're continuing to our series of interviews with faculty members who are retiring from Missouri Southern. I invite you to stay tuned for other episodes in upcoming weeks. I'm Judy Stiles. We'll see you then. Thank you.